This morning on the huddle, we're going to be talking about 10 ways to improve your YouTube channel and get more views in 2022 on this holiday edition of the huddle. Merry Christmas to you. You've opened all the presents with the kids. You've had some sip of eggnog in your favorite cup or beverage. And so on this holiday edition, we wanted to just spend some time and share some cheers and and get us ready for 2022. Of course, I had to get permission from the wife and, and my daughter to do live stream this morning. But uh, we want to stay consistent, but we're going to keep it brief here on The Huddle. Praise the Lord, everyone. Welcome to The Huddle. I'm your host, Walter Strong. If you're new here, we want to welcome you to the show where we're helping you broaden your reach, your impact, and income through online video. This morning, as we said, we're going to just spread a little holiday cheer for the content creators as we get ready for 2022. And it's all about how we can go to the next level and level up and be able to be able to get our YouTube channels as content creators, um, not only on YouTube, but if you're on Facebook Live, 10 ways we can improve our content, improve our YouTube channel. And so since we're on this morning, uh, we normally do have guests, but we realize people are enjoying themselves for the holidays, like my good man, Mr. Steve Worthy. 2022 is going to blow up for podcasters live. So, you know, I'm joining you for the ride. See, you have rhymes, right, Steve? But so we're going to do something a little different this morning. I'm trying something out for 2022. So give me one second. Let me cue this up here. And put that there. And then we want to share our screen. Steve, since you have joined us this morning you can give me your feedback on this new thing i am trying out let's get it all cued get it all cued get it all cued boom all right so stay let me know if you see this and those of you who are joining us in on the chat let us know where you're watching me from uh, so we will shout you out give you a merry christmas shout out so um, we're doing something different this morning. We're trying something out for 2022. We're going to be doing a little more screen sharing when it's just myself on the huddle because, you know, as we bring guests on, we, we want to bring guests on that's going to help broaden your reach, your impact and income. But we understand a lot of our guests sometimes are busy with their own things. And so, you know, there may be times where it may be yours truly. So I got this great idea from my good man, Mr. Dean Reynolds. And, you know, I was trying using StreamYards, trying to use their different things to uh, use their banners. But one of the things he had said to me was when you're going to do over five different banners, sometimes it's best to just go ahead into a straight presentation mode. And so we're going to try this presentation things out. So we're talking about 10 ways how to improve your YouTube channel and get yourself more views. So if you are a podcaster who has a YouTube channel, or if you are a content creator who has a YouTube channel and you use it as, as, a, as a, another vehicle to be able to get more eyes on your content, we are looking for uh, to get more views, then this, this is some content that we feel will be great relevant to you. So we got some pictures there. So let's get into this here. Boom. So tip number one, is having a goal for your channel. So a lot of individuals, it's it's amazing how so many YouTube channels are being started every day and people upload content. 
But what is interesting as people start YouTube channels, they just upload videos because this is something that they feel they want to share and they, they're looking to get views. They want to get subscribers. But when you start something just, just in regular life, like we tell our, our children, we tell our young people, you know, you got to have a goal because there has to be an end result of what you want to accomplish with it. And I remember when I started YouTube channel, my YouTube channel, I didn't really have a goal or destination for it. I was just kind of uploading content. But then as I started listening to more of the established YouTube creators and seeing the possibilities of being able to make income and being able to grow something that would add value, I had to kind of reevaluate and to have a goal for it. And so just like we understand in, in, in goal setting, we have to have not just a goal, but we have to have a smart goal or smart goals, goals that are specific, goals that are that are that are measurable, goals that are attainable, relevant and, and time bound. And if we have a smart goal or smart goals, then that's going to increase our chances to improve our channel. That's going to increase your chances to um, become a better content creator that's going to add value to um, to your audience. Having a goal, whether if you're in podcasting, whether doing online video, or if you're doing YouTube shorts, there has to be a goal behind what you're doing. And so I think that's the, the first tip we want to st start with. And, and as we do next week's uh, live stream, January 1st, uh, we're going to get more into goal setting as content creators and, and, and YouTube. Tip number two, having clarity about your channel, having clarity, um, because, again, people start doing their YouTube channels and they start to upload content. Maybe they upload some content on, you know, vlogging about their themselves and about family. And then they may upload some content based on a particular topic or or, or current event or social impact issue that they want to talk about. And then maybe they'll, they'll upload a, a video on some tech on, you know, three things you need to know about the latest iPhone that's been released by Apple. And so they're releasing all this different type of content. It's becoming variety. Um, but the truth of the matter is there is no real clarity in terms of who this content is for. You more and more what I'm learning is YouTube wants to be able to get our content out to viewers, but they want to know who is our content for. And it has to be the type of content that people will 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 click on our videos. They will begin to engage and watch our videos and then look to want to watch a next video. Well, if they go to watch the next video and the next video is based on you know, your personal feelings about the 2020 election or, or you know, uh, about how the election uh, happened, the, you know, your feelings about it. But your last video was about tech, uh, a tech video on, you know, five ways to be able to get the best webcam for your live stream. But now you're talking about politics, then that viewer is not going to be interested in watching that content anymore and they're going to stop. And so we have to have clarity, you know, variety is good, but clarity is better. I'll say that again. Variety is good, but clarity is better. Sometimes it's not about what we think is good, but for the viewer, it's, it's about what's best for the viewer. And that's what YouTube is looking to be able to get more content out for viewers more and more in, in 2022. I mean, think about it. They have YouTube television now. They're, they've gone into the arena now of not just doing videos, um, but they're they're into TV. They're into music. And it's like YouTube has positioned itself where now they have become a competitor to the major cable channels. They've become more of a competitor to your radio stations. And so same, the same thing with, with online video and live streaming, um, they want to be able to share content, right? 
And so we have to have clarity as creators and clarity in terms of who our content is for clarity in terms of how we're going to reach them. I think my biggest struggles in my earlier days with YouTube was not only being able to find who my, my content was going to be for, but then I, I lacked the clarity of how I was going to reach them. And it, it's a process as, as a new, I still consider myself a new YouTube content creator. Um, I'm still in the classroom learning. So I don't think I've, I've graduated to say that I've become an established YouTuber yet. Not so much judging myself by the views and the numbers, but I'm still in the classroom. But 2022 is where I feel, okay, we've, we've, we've did high school on the high school level of YouTube. Now we're going into college in 2022. Tip number three, boom, there we go. So we talked about having a goal. We talked about having clarity, having a channel art for your YouTube page. You will be very, it's very interesting when I am looking to bring on new guests to the huddle, other fellow YouTube creators to give them a platform so people can find about the, their channel and, and being out what type of content that they're making and why they've got into YouTube. It, it's, it's kind of interesting that I'm coming across individuals and they don't have a channel art. They don't have anything to, when you first click on the page to find out what their, their YouTube channel is about, what, what their videos are about. Um, the channel art to me is like, you do all this work on the, your house and home improvement on the inside, but you do no work on your house on the outside. It's about the curb appeal. So if the, the outside doesn't have anything, if it doesn't have a fresh coat of paint, if it doesn't have you know, the, the, the yard cleaned up, then that person basically is going to end up looking at that channel and keep moving. And so having channel art that has a consistent brand and message is going to help you today to get more viewers, to be able to get possibly more subscribers and to grow your channel. And so that's why I, I put this tip here because, um, and again, if, if this is a passion project for you and you, you just YouTube is just something you're looking to do, then I understand. But when we talked about goals, if your goal is to grow your business and you want to increase sales, get more leads, if that's your goal and you have a clarity about a, a type of audience you're trying to reach, then having a channel R page is important to improve the growth and views of your YouTube channel. Hey, if you're getting great value from this live stream discussion this morning, and you like how I kind of put this into it, um, do me a favor, uh, smash the like button and, and gives us a thumbs up. Share this live stream this morning. If you're watching us, especially those of you who will watch us on the replay, give us a hashtag replay. and. Um, Click the like button. And also, if you haven't had an opportunity yet, subscribe to the channel because we want to help you broaden your reach, your impact and income through online video um, each and every time we go live or we upload a video. So let's get back into these tips this morning. Uh, tip number four, customizing the layout of your YouTube channel. And this is also something that more and more as I'm, I'm, I'm seeking to grow and to become an authority in my niche and uh, of the content that I'm trying to present to my audience. It's, it's interesting. A, a lot of new YouTubers or individuals who's been on for a while, they'll just, if you look at the channel, they'll just have that first row of videos and it'll have like 20, 25 videos, but they don't have no channel layout to it to show. Okay. These are the recent uploaded videos. These are the most popular videos. These are videos for new beginners. These are videos for my live streams. Having your channel page uh, laid out so that way when someone comes to your channel, they, again, they understand the brand and the message that you are, you are communicating on your channel through your channel art page. And then also it's laid out. 
for people to be able to see what your channel is about so they can be engaged and watch more of your videos. You know, I got this this concept from, you know, listening to other content creators, but it really became clear to me why this was important when I would watch Netflix. Um, because most of the time I'm, I'm watching shows like The Flash. I'm watching Arrow. I'm watching Designated Survivor um, on Netflix. But then if I'm looking for a particular movie, in a specific movie, as I'm scrolling down, I'm show, I'm, they're showing me the, the latest new releases. They're showing me the, 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 um, the most popular movies. They're showing me their action thrillers, their comedies. There's a channel layout that Netflix, Amazon Prime, Disney Plus, you go to Disney Plus, they have it broken down. You have Pixar, you have Marvel, you have Disney you have the Discovery Channel. There's a channel layout order for these, these streaming companies that they use to be able to show their audience uh, the type of content they have to so get them engaged. And, and I think that's a principle as content creators we need to apply on our YouTube channel. Having And, and maybe we, we've done it, but also updating it. Because you may have a customized layout channel, but you've been on YouTube now for about two years, but you don't have it updated. And so, again, by not having it updated, you having old content that may not be relevant to the content that you're making today. And as a result of it not being relevant, the viewer only watches one or two videos and they stop watching. And so we want to have viewer engagement. We, we, the more YouTube sees um, our viewers engaged in watching our videos, clicking the, you know, the thumbs up button, sharing our content, um, then they, they're going to suggest our videos to more people to watch. And, and I believe that's the secret sauce to improvement. Uh, having a, a customized layout page that is relevant to the content that we are making today. Um, tip number five. Let's see if we can get this here. There we go. Tip number five, filling out your about page. Sounds simple. It sounds simple, but again, is, you know, part of what we're looking to do on the huddle every Saturday morning is to be able to bring on other content creators. Who, who who can share about their passion and why they started on YouTube and and to share, you know, who's the audience that they're trying to reach. And but then when I go to their about page is I'm looking at the prospective person to bring on to bring before you. Um, they don't have it filled out or if it is filled out, there's very little about there that help that doesn't really give me a good understanding about who they are as a content creator. And so if you are starting a YouTube channel and you are, and it's not a passion project, but it, you have a goal of, of what you're, you, you want to be able to maybe bring in a, a, a stream of income through making YouTube videos, through you sharing videos about a particular passion that you have that will address a pain point, in your viewer's life, you you have to complete your about page so people will get to understand who you are and what you're about and, and what you're trying to accomplish because that about page is also going to help give you an opportunity if your YouTube channel really starts to take off, then it gives you the possibility of uh, uh, brand deals or sponsorship deals come around the, you know, the prospective company that wants to be able to possibly do business with you, they want, they all know a little something about you and um, having your about page. And what is also is in terms of, you can also put your email address. Um, if you go in as you're filling it out, as you're customizing your channel, and then you can be able to have them contact, contact you off your about page. And so, Having your about page fully filled out plays a very big role in improving your channel. Tip number six, having compelling title and description. I know we've talked about this over and over, 
But it, it's true. As YouTube becomes very competitive, if more people get on YouTube and scroll on their mobile phone or, or iPad or, or, or Kindle, and they see all these different videos, they're, they're watching one video and, they're, and their intent is to watch another video on the, 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 the topic or video idea that they want. We want to position ourselves as content creators that we will be that next video. If we're not the first video, we're that next video and suggested that the person is wants to watch. We're that video that they're going to, to select. Um, if, 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 if the area is about learning to become about podcasting, that we have a compelling title in the description. It, I, I share something, Steve, from a viewer standpoint on my homepage, you and Ash both show up on my homepage. And so I'm always seeing your latest um, videos that you guys are making on podcasting. And, and so I then, of course, watch your video, watch Ash. But from a viewer standpoint, if I personally didn't know you guys, I then as a viewer, I'm going to look at and say, okay, this is something I'm interested in, but I'm going to look at in terms of the title and the description that's going to play a part um, on my decision on clicking your on a person's video and and them getting the view of me watching that video. So we have to be able to cre create more better compelling titles and descriptions to get more views on our YouTube channel and um, being able to get in an engaged viewer and then ultimately turning that engaged viewer into a subscriber. Uh, tip number seven, along with a competitive title uh, description, um, creating more better um, quality thumbnails. This is something that um, if you come from the graphic design world, this may be easy for you as a person in creating thumbnails. But if you're just a person who just started out on YouTube like I did, um, making um, quality thumbnails to get someone to click on your video, that is something that is, is it's a skill that can be learned. Um, I use Canva Pro and and I, and it's really helped me to be able to make better quality thumbnails. And I'm seeing the results in people clicking more on my videos, you know, because when I was first starting out, I was like, I'm not getting any views. I'm not getting any views. And what I was understanding was that the part of the reason why I wasn't getting any views was that. Um, my thumbnail just wasn't uh, of quality to get someone to watch. And a thumbnail, I believe, has to be legible. A thumbnail has to be able to have um, an image um, that speaks to the video that's in, in relationship to it, rather as if, if it's uh, me on the, vid on the thumbnail or if it's a, a food channel and you have, you know, a plate of lasagna on it that's just presented in such a way that makes you just want to just click on that video, that thumbnail is a quality. Now, there is an argument to say, well, what about those who just don't upload a thumbnail and they just have the image from the video and they got 200 to 300 views on their video? Well, they didn't use a thumbnail, but they got more views. I think that goes back to having a compelling title and a description. Has, I believe that comes back to that. But over time, if you're trying to improve and to grow your channel and you're trying to get more views and you're trying to get subscribers, you have to be able to be engaged in making quality thumbnails. Hey, if you're getting great value out of our discussion this morning on 10 ways how to improve the quality of your channel, do me a favor, smash the like button by clicking the thumbs up, share it on your favorite uh, social media channel. And do me if you're watching the replay, give us a hashtag replay. Um, let, and we want to appreciate you watching the replay. I realize it's the holidays, but I, I thank you um, 
for hanging out with us. We, you know, and it's all about consistency. I, I you know, I, I could have taken off and waited to New Year's, but I, I've, I'm a real big on consistency and just staying consistent with this. And the 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 time and the effort that the seeds I'm planting now, um, the investment will pay off in the long run. Tip number eight, um, <laughs> boom, being consistent in uploading your video, being consistent in doing your live streams, being consistent in doing shorts, if that's what you're making on YouTube, being consistent as a content creator, getting in front of the camera, uploading videos, and not just in the sense of just being consistent in, in uploading videos or live streams, but again, having a consistent brand and message uh, that your channel has on it so that viewers will watch more of your content and be more engaged. And then they will subscribe to the channel. They will share your content with other people. Um, YouTube will begin to share your videos with other people because they want to get your videos or your live stream in front of more people that the type of content you're making for. And so consistency, consistency. And so you say, well, Walter, I work a full-time job. It's hard for me to be able to, I can do my live streams, but it's hard for me to upload videos and being consistent. Well, I, I'm working a full-time job too. Um, and there was a period of time where I wasn't working. And so when I looked at my YouTube analytics, over the last 90 days, I saw my videos performing, getting 90 to 100 views. You know, I got to appreciate small beginnings and, and celebrating small wins. But I was being consistent in my videos. And so I was getting views. And I was getting subscribers over this, over this last quarter. But then once I went back to work, I kind of focused more on the huddle live streams. And so when you're not consistently uploading youtube is still surfacing and showing our content to viewers to watch and so i'm, I'm looking in my youtube analytics basically what's performing and doing well is my live streams but i don't have any uploaded videos i i, I have i don't do shorts um and nothing against shorts but i primarily have always focused on uploading videos and doing live streams but i've seen the growth in the channel, not just specifically through my live streams, but it's through my uploaded videos. And so being consistent in uploading videos, one, one video a week, that's something we're gonna get back to um, starting in January and doing a live stream every Saturday morning. That's, that's two times we're on YouTube and the growth that we're looking for, we'll be able to slowly uh, produce itself and we'll see the results in the YouTube analytics and tip number nine, um, using other YouTube tools, you other YouTube tools such as TubeBuddy. And so when you need to come up with a compelling title or description, you can use TubeBuddy through doing keyword research to be able to come up with a title and a description that will be able to help you to be able to say, okay, this is the niche audience I'm trying to reach. Um, how do I come up with a compelling title in the description that's going to increase my chances and improve my challenge chances and my video being viewed and watched and me growing the channel so using tools like YouTube, um, TubeBuddy. Um, this video is not sponsored by TubeBuddy. Um, so but we, we, we see the value in TubeBuddy. Another tool that we use here is StreamYards. Um, StreamYards is a live stream platform software that can help you to broadcast your live streams, not just on YouTube, but other channel plat social media platforms like Twitter. So we are on Twitter. Um, if I wanted to do Facebook uh, through my Facebook group or Facebook page profile, I can do that as well. So that's another tool that can help you to improve the quality of your channel. Um, again, not sponsored, 
uh, but it's a tool that we value and we use. So it's a part of our toolbox. Um, if you are a person who likes having intro music and outro music um, in your live streams, Epidemic Sounds is another tool you can use. And um, I've gotten more better quality music to be able to play on my other um, live stream show on, that I do on Monday nights, my sports talk show from Steve through just some of the videos that he play, uh, songs he plays uh, through Epidemic. And it, it's a great tool to use for your channel. And again, not sponsored, but it's a tool that we can use. And so you want to get put some tools in your toolbox to help you to improve the, uh, and grow your YouTube channel. Uh, tip number 10, learning your YouTube analytics. Learning about your YouTube analytics. Um, when I really really started to see some real significant growth. Um, I began to understand that my YouTube analytics was going to be the key to be able to grow this YouTube channel. Again, if this is not a passion project and this is something where you have a goal with this, you want to make income from this, maybe becoming a full-time content creator or having it where you can get more leads, and get more sales for your business. Um, your YouTube analytics is going to be critical to help you to understand um, how your videos are performing. Um, I remember making a video, uh, a how to live stream with uh, Jeff Barks from Story Greenlight. And he was like the second YouTube creator that I had interviewed on the channel. That live stream got me about maybe over a hundred views. So then when I went and did an, uh, after about 90 days, after I did a, vi a, a uploaded video on how to stand out on, on YouTube, I got close to almost a hundred views on that one. And so what the YouTube analytics showed me was this is what my viewers were really interested in. And I just made a part two adding on to the discussion um, of that video. And I've kind of did that um, more and more on videos that or live streams that perform better and and to go ahead and just use my YouTube analytics. Hey, look, people are using analytics all the time. Uh, baseball, you know, the way we see people play baseball it's not the way they played baseball 20, 30 years ago. They play baseball now based on analytics. They even made a movie called Moneyball Analytics. Basketball players don't even really play basketball the way they used to um, back in the days of the Pistons, the Lakers, the Celtics, the Bulls, and, and some of the other teams that played basketball back in those days. They play it by analytics. Everyone now is shooting three pointers. Um, it's it's not by accident that Steph Curry shoots as many threes that he does. And, you know, and I don't want to turn this into a sports show, but my point I'm trying to drive home is analytics. Analytics is driving a lot of the, what we're seeing and experiencing in our world. Analytics, when you and rather if you go into a retail store, um, and you do your shopping. I dare say analytics is being is being driven through those business decisions. And so as a content creator, you as well has to embrace your YouTube analytics to be able to improve your YouTube channel, get more views in 2022. And um, question of the day I have for you is my fellow content creator, which of these tools are you using or are you do you need to use to improve your YouTube channel to get more views in 2022? And so we just wanted to come on and um, during this holiday season and uh, share some content with you uh, to give to you as a gift um, so that you can be able to begin to improve the quality of your channel. And so, um, hey, Give me your thoughts on this new way now, if it's 
Uh, if I don't have a guest on, we're going to just start doing more slide presentations. I definitely like it better versus trying to, you know, and StreamYard has some, 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 some good stuff on being able to use banners and things. But um, I, I think this will be much better because I kind of feel like it's more of a, a classroom teaching setting, being able to use visual arts to be able to help us as content creators. So, hey, I'm, I'm excited. I am excited. And so I want to thank you, those of you who, especially Steve, I appreciate your support, your 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 support and your friend your friendship. Even though we've never personally met one another, just developing a a, a friendship and a bond over content creation is a, a, a gift that I truly appreciate. You have um, afforded and given me the opportunity to experience with you, so I appreciate that. And to those of you who will catch the replay, um. We appreciate you watching this video, this live stream, and give us a hashtag replay, share this. And um, that's about it for, for the day. We just wanted to come on for a few minutes, share some content, and share some holiday cheers and, and encouragement to you. So we will see you next Saturday, January 1. We're going to be talking about goal setting, goal setting. and if 2022 in January permits itself, we want to get Mr. Steve Worthy back on to help us continue that conversation about goal setting that we need to, as content creators, YouTubers, podcasters, video influencers, why we need to do some goal setting. So we'll definitely work with Steve to, to have him come back on. And so, as we close out, we always close out by saying many are the plans in a person's heart. Oh, we don't have our cue. We're about to go off air and we don't even have our music cue. Look at that. There we go. Many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails in our lives. So make a quality decision today, especially during this holiday season to let God's purpose prevail in your life. Hey, see you on the next huddle. God bless.